able to analyze the impact of various trade policies is producer surplus. Now that's defined as the difference between the producer benefit from participating in the market and the total variable cost. That's another way of saying economic profit plus any payments to fixed factors. All of this will be um, uh, clear in, <clears throat> excuse me, in a moment. This is going to be the, our basic measure of producer welfare under various uh, circumstances. Uh, and we will be particularly interested in looking at, when we look at trade, looking at the change in producer surplus. The fundamental tool that's used in analyzing producer surplus is the supply curve, which shows the firm's willingness to bring a good to the, to the market. Now, the benefits for a, a producer doing that um, is the revenue that you get by selling. So the first unit, <clears throat> the marginal benefit of selling that first unit is the market price. For the competitive firm, they can't affect the price, so the marginal benefit, the marginal revenue, is the market price. And they compare that to the extra cost of producing that first unit, the marginal cost, which is given by the supply curve. <clears throat> the difference is that the producer surplus for the first unit. Since that, the benefit exceeds the cost, the firm should produce that unit. And they will continue to the point where the marginal benefit equal marginal cost, where the marginal revenue, where the price, is equal to the marginal cost of producing one more unit. That is where the price meets the supply curve. The total variable cost of producing that many is the area under the supply curve. This is a critical part to, to remember. In many different instances, we're going to be looking at the, the, the change in total variable cost. That's going to be the area under the uh, supply curve. So that trapezoid is the total extra cost of producing those three units. And that is uh, less than the revenue. So the firm has positive producer surplus and is willing to, uh, to sell those three units. So let's take a look at uh, a particular, this particular example with uh, uh, producer surplus. The revenue that the firm gets by selling 10 units at $20 is, uh, it's, it's actually $200. That's given by revenue price times quantity or area A plus B. That total variable cost of producing the 10 units is the area under the supply curve. And so the producer surplus is that triangle A. And that is the, the way, the fundamental way that we're going to be calculating producer surplus in, uh, in all the examples going forward. But we're going to often be concerned with a change in producer surplus. Okay, in this example, we've got a measure of revenue at price P1, price times quantity, FG, minus the total variable cost. So in this example, the producer surplus is the, the, uh, uh, the triangle, or area F, given by that uh, red uh, triangle. If the price of the product goes up, some firms will now enter the market, or an existing firm will increase the quantity that it supplies. But since the supply curve is upward sloping, that reflects that marginal costs are rising as the firms produce more. You have a different analysis if the marginal cost might be decreasing, but in this particular example, uh, those costs are going to go up. The producer surplus at uh, price P2 is going to be the total revenue that the firms get, price times quantity, HK, FGL, minus the cost, the total variable cost of producing Q2, area under the supply curve, 
uh, or area KGL, so that the new producer surplus is HF. It is also a triangle. It's the analog to area F, just bigger, reflecting the higher price. So this change in producer surplus is given by the, the difference between the producer surplus at price P2 and the producer surplus at price P1. Now there's a, uh, an easy way to remember this. In a lot of the, the different graphs we're going to be doing, it gets, gets pretty complicated with a bunch of different uh, lines and areas, and, but it's, it really is always exactly the same thing. A simple way to remember the change in producer surplus is to think of it as the area defined by the difference in price, how price has changed, and then taking that over to the uh, supply curve, so that area, which is defined this way. So let, what do I mean by that? The difference in price, the change in price, is given by the vertical distance between P1 and P2. The area over to the supply curve is that red trapezoid. And in essentially every example that we're going to be doing in this course, the, produce, the change in producer surplus is going to be a trapezoid of some sort. But it's always determined in the same way, area defined by the difference in the price over the supply curve. And if you remember that, it will be very helpful as we get into more complicated uh, examples. Here's another supply curve, another set of prices, another set of letters. In this case, total revenue is CBA, total variable cost is A, so the producer surplus is CB. Again, a triangle uh, to the left of the supply curve below the price. Here's another example. Lots of different letters. We've got a demand curve on this uh, graph. If we look at a change in producer surplus from P2 to P1, what we're going to do is look at the difference in the price over the supply curve. That is area GH. Now that's the change, that's not the level. Okay, the level of producer surplus at price P2 is B. The level of producer surplus at P1 is GHB. The difference is GH. Now it's also useful to interpret some of the, the different areas uh, in this change in producer surplus. That's a very intuitive uh, meaning and uh, is, I think, helpful to understand what's going on. So in this particular graph, we've got a change in uh, producer surplus associated with the rise of price from P1 to P2. Total producer surplus rises by BC, so the change in the price over the supply curve, same as always. But let's break this, these effects up into two components. You have at price P1, Q0 supplied by the, uh, by the producers. They're selling it at price P1, and we've got an associated revenue when you had that initial price. Once the price goes up, these same firms are going to continue to make this good. They were willing to sell it at price P1. If the price goes up to P2, they're, they feel great about this. So by doing exactly the same thing, by producing Q0, they're now going to get higher revenue, this red box, price P2 times Q0. In other words, B is the increase in producer surplus associated with firms that produce the good before the price change and who continue to produce the same amount of goods after the price change. This is just free money. They were willing to uh, sell at P1, and they're getting it at P2. So that's one component. So if the price goes up, the, the people that were in the market are going to get some uh, easy benefits. But you've also had 
an increase in the quantity that's produced. Now that could be new firms or it could be existing firms expanding production, but those firms are going to now find it profitable to expand production. It costs them an extra variable cost, the area under the supply curve, but they're going to get revenue equal to that box. And again, the area under the supply curve is how much it costs them to make it. This is how much revenue they get. So that C is the increase in producer surplus for firms that are now able to increase production profitably. So those are the two components of producer surplus. Those who get some freebies because the price has gone up and those who are now able to uh, produce the product. Now you should think about how if the price goes from P2 to P1, everything is reversed. In that case, C would reflect the firms that have to leave the market because the price goes down and uh, B would be the loss of producer surplus associated with firms that remained in the market. In some of the analyses, we're going to have the price go up. In others, the price go down. So it's good to be familiar with uh, both of those. So in summary, in this video, we've defined producer surplus and associated it with the uh, supply curve, the height of the supply curve, giving the marginal cost, the price, for a competitive firm giving the marginal benefit. The total revenue minus the total variable cost is, is the actual definition of producer surplus. But we've focused particularly on how a price change will affect producer surplus. And then analyze the two components of uh, changes in producer surplus um, for those firms that stay in the market and those firms that uh, enter the market if the price goes up, or who leave the market if the price goes down.